it didn't happen so quickly last year for him in his first year, but it seems to have happened this year. But it's, I do think it's an example. It's the immovable, uh, wait, the immovable uh, object meets the irresistible force. If Chris Jans' defense is, 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 is every bit as good as Paul Weir's offense, or, or so we'll see tonight. UNM has the ball first in the cheery red road unis at 4-1. Rebound for Aore Koachea off the Malawatch miss. NM State averaging 78 points per game. Here is pitch out for Rice. Here's CJ Bobbitt down low to Yvonne. Aore Koachea on the reverse. And that's his strength. Adams Aore Koachea really knows how to get, get uh, turf down there around the basket. Spin move by Ezzedine, slapped away by CJ Bobbitt, and immediately a trap from UNM. Pushing as Harris ahead for Zamora, and he's blocked away by the German Pinchuk, who is 6'11. Well, I thought Jojo Zamora might toss this to Aracochea there. But and he's very effective around the basket, Jojo is, but but it got knocked away by Vladimir Pinchuk. Maggie's coming off a six-point win against Power 5. Washington State at home over the weekend. Their third straight year with a Power 5 win. First home win against the Power 5, though, again, since 2002. Harris guarded by Malawatch, now on the switch. Mismatch here as Pinshaw guards him. Harris misfires, and it's saved, but it's going to go to the Aggies. Good hustle there for Ivan Aore Koachea. Boy, he really brings it at him. He's just, you know, he's just tough and a relentless worker. There he is on the reverse. He's crafty around the basket, too. UNM ranked 15th in the country in turnover margin last year, but they're only forcing 15 turnovers per game so far this year. Although their pressure was much better last weekend and a key road win at Bradley out of the Missouri Valley. Jabari Rice with it. Redshirt freshman making his first collegiate start. Back to Aure Koachea. And he's fouled on his way up. It's, it's maybe, maybe the only negative about Ivan Orokachea's game is he's not an explosive leaper, but he knows it. He's not trying to dunk it. He's trying to make a reverse layup, use his body. I mean, he is so physical and such a presence under there. A nice pass by Barry Rice. So far this year, Ivan has shot it well from the free throw line, 74%. And that's been one of the big changes from last year to this year, coaches, the Yankees are shooting the ball much better for the free throw particularly line. The, particularly the big men. But, and, and also with the, the big Spaniard, seems to get off to a, a great start every game because he's so relent he's such a relentless worker. Four nothing Aggies. Anthony Mathis came in, so did Corey Manigault, Dane Kuyper. As well, so three new players on the floor for UNM. Mathis has it, guarded by A.J. Harris. We'll see how the Yankees defend Mathis, who's the best three-point shooter in the country so far this year. Here's Manigal, misses, rebound for Rice. Aure Koachea was the outlet man, which wasn't supposed to happen, but the Yankees slow things down anyway. A.J. Harris sort of dodged a bullet there. He ran to get a handoff from uh, from Orokachea and wound up dead in the corner. He was able to... Oh. That's over and back on the Aggies, and this is what the trapping pressure will do to that's, an opposition. That's right, and, and so far, you know, the Aggies got a break there when uh, A.J. Harris got trapped at midcourt, and there we see an errant pass. You've got uh, C.J. Bobbitt trying to catch it with one hand, which isn't a great idea either, and the Lobos get the ball. Two minutes in, Lobo is still looking for their first point. And they average 88. And Ames Jackson still hasn't come in. He's a transfer from UConn, who had a really good year two years ago for UConn. The clutch, Malawash, blocked away by Jabari Rice and picked up by C.J. Bobbitt. Bobbitt will push. Bounces to Aure Koetschia. In one for Yvonne. Boy, the big Spaniard, Rory making his presence known. He's such a competitor, such a such a tough guy. And it's him running the floor here as well. Not many big guys can run like, like Cora Cochea. Foul goes on Dane Kuyper. Number two on UNM, number one on Kuyper. 
One of the cool storylines here tonight as well is Ivan Aure Koachia played Juco ball at Indian Hills with Corey Manigault, one of the stars for UNF. And Aure Koachia has all seven for the Aggies. Ivan Aure Koachia, seven, UNM nothing. Well, we can call it Spain, Spain seven and UNM nothing. How about that? Here's Vance Jackson. UConn transfer to Kuiper, who's had a great career for the Lobos. He's averaging 10 a game this year. Good shooter, misses, corralled by Aure Koachea. Aggies doing a good job. I know it's early, but so far against this trap of UNM. Aure Koachea again with the left hand. And the miss is collected by Minigault. He bounced for Juco teammate. That one was a sort of a left-handed fadeaway jump hook. Lost by Manigault, here comes Jojo Zamora, and he's fouled by Dane Kuiper. Pretty great hustle by Kuiper there. He came all the way from, well, not quite from Alaska, where he where he grew up, but came the length of the court to run down Jojo Zamora, which is not an easy thing to do. By the way, slow starts, not unusual for UNM. That's been a theme for them. In fact, over the weekend at Bradley, they trailed 11-0 early. Well, and against UTEP also, they were, they were losing, losing badly early came back. Jojo Zamora had a good opener against North Dakota State. He scored 16 that night, Coach, and since he's only combined for 23 in the previous six. And now we'll get a hockey line change from Aggie head coach Chris Jans as he brings in a fresh bunch. Johnny McCants, Eli Chua, who's back from a back injury, Sean Buchanan, and Clayton Henry. Terrell Brown will come in if Zamora makes this free throw. <laughs> Coach, you're really high on Terrell Brown, who just entered. He's averaging 12 a game off the bench. He has a talent that could be a go-to guy offensively for the Yankees this year. Well, that's right. He's, he's got a beautiful high arching shot, but he's a terrific defender as well. He's got great quickness there. You see him on the ball there. Walk on Jordan Arroyo to Malawatch. Looks like Buchanan's face guarding Mathis on the sideline, coach. Yes, and I think that was part of the game plan that we got from Casey Owens before the game, is that they would face guard Mathis and try not to let him catch the ball. And that shot was forced there by Malawatch. UNM 0 of 5 shooting, the bounce to Chua. Locked away, Arroyo gets the miss. Jackson guarded by Brown, size differential there. There's going to be size differentials all over the floor, though, for the Aggies. Arroyo, back to for Mathis, short with the floater. Well, that right there was his fifth shot from inside the three-point line this year. Buchanan all the way to the rim, but no call by Pinchuk. Numbers for UNM. Jackson in transition, he can't make it. Malawash blocked away by Chua. This is, doesn't even draw the iron. Here come the Aggies, a three on two. Brown to the rim, no good. Put back for Chua. The great minutes already from Eli Chua, who'd been hurt a little bit the last few games. But, but that two point shot, the, the 14 footer by Mathis, is one of the few times he shot a non three this year. Jackson blocked away by Johnny McCants. Aggies with numbers again. Buchanan leaves it for Johnny, down the lane, no good. Put back, no good for Chua, but he's gonna shoot too. And, and, and uh, the real story there was a great play by Chua, but Johnny McCants with tremendous hustle. Another horrendous start for UNM as the Aggies go for their fifth straight win against UNM for the first time since 55-56. 10 zip Aggies in Las Cruces. It's a loud one tonight here at the Pan American Center in Las Cruces alongside former Aggie assistant Russ Bradford, Adam Young on hand. Glad he could join us tonight. All-time meeting 222 between the Aggies and Lobos. Lobos off to a slow start again. And for the Aggies, Ivan Aore Koachea, the Juco transfer from Indian Hills, has seven to lead the Aggies. Well, these two teams are scoring a bunch so far this year. Some gaudy offensive numbers for UNM, 50% from the field. 
45% from three. I think the interesting stat there for UNM coach in particular is their turnover margin is minus two. Paul Weir wants that probably plus four, plus five, plus six because of how often they pressure and how often they trap. That's right. And, and uh, he's willing to, Paul Weir's willing to take some lumps and, and give up some fast break baskets himself in order to up the tempo and, and to keep things, keep things going at the pace he wants to play at. And so that's always always a battle between, there's a you know, little side battle going on between Paul Weir and Chris Janzis. Who's going to control the tempo mm -hmm. and, and, and the way this game is played? And one of the big keys in the previous three meetings since Paul Weir's been on the Lobo sideline and Chris Janzis has been on the Aggie sideline is the Aggies always handle the press at ease when they play UNF. Well, that, that's right. And it's, you know, they're just, they're, you know, one thing with Chris Jans' team, they're going to be hyper-prepared. They're, they're go deep into the scouting reports. And, uh, and it's, 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 uh, the Aggies are only playing one true freshman, of course, with Jabari Rice. Big difference, though, against that press is the Aggies had Jamario Jones last year. Now they really rely on A.J. Harris to break the press. Harris on the bench. Buchanan's in for him to run the points. Jackson misfires, and McCants rebounds. UNM is 0 of 9 for the field. McCann's hands it off to Buchanan. Uses the ball screen from Chua. Buchanan back out. McCann fires a three. Not really Johnny shot, although he's already attempted six threes this year in just four games. Finger roll and the seal is broken. That was Kareem Ezzedine who only averages four per game for UNM. Took a while for the fans to sit. And this is a good one. When a guy can dribble at 90 feet, that, that'll be watched probably 20 times during the film session tomorrow, when a guy can dribble at 90 feet and shoot a layup. Mohamed Sham is in for the first time for the Yankees. Had a season-high nine points and a season-high 22 minutes in the first meeting. The Yankees had McCants wide open, but Sham didn't look at him. I saw him go at him. You did? You were pointed? Yeah, I pointed. Point guard vision, Coach. Yeah, that's it. Still no A.J. Harris. So Buchanan continues to run the point, and he gets called for carrying the basketball, which is a call UNM one had called earlier in this game, Marshawn. So now Harris is going to check in. And a rare turnover for Sean Buchanan, who, who often plays mistake-free. La last game he made that giant three-pointer against uh, Washington State. Yeah, we haven't talked about that, Adam, but the, the Aggies knock off. Pac-10, yeah. are they Pac-12 now? What are they? Pac-12. Pac-12, uh, uh, Washington State. What a, what a great win for the Aggies and what a great win for the WAC Conference. How about this, too? Three straight years now with a Power 5 win. That was Keith McGee on the scoop shot. UNM will pressure the entire game. They will trap the entire game as well. McGee trying to draw a charge. They call a blocking foul, probably a 50-50 call there in the backcourt. Well, maybe could have gone, maybe could have gone either way. Let's watch, let's watch again. Watch Terrell Brown. He's so quick. Oh no, I'd say that was a, that was a block. That's already the fifth on UNM. None on the Aggies so far. And one of the things Chris Chance talked about earlier this week is his team doesn't foul a lot and. Surely he doesn't want his team to foul more, but he wants his team to put more pressure on the opposition defensively, which would lead to fouls occasionally. But even even this kind of pressure, is, you know, takes the Aggies out of what they normally what they normally want to do. And it's just it's just uh, Paul Weir trying to throw a wrench in the in the game plan. That was tipped by McGee, corralled by Brown. Tend to shoot for the Aggies. Low post entry stolen by Jackson, intended for Aure Koachea. Azadine pushes for UNM. Now it's Jackson. Here's McGee. Transfer from South Plains College. Working on Brown. And a foul is called. Once around Brown. That's two, pre two pretty quick players there between Keith McGee and Terrell Brown. Even, even in slow motion, it looks pretty quick. Chris Jans not happy with Clayton Henry. Mathis came in for Jackson during the timeout. Well, Clay had he had uh, Muhammad Chum wide open and, and, and tried to force it into the to Yvonne inside and it didn't work. 
Mianagol working on Shah, stolen away by Mohamed Shah. Ahead for El Rey Coachea, back door to Chum, and midair can't skip it through. Yeah, probably hurried that. He maybe it wasn't a great pass. He maybe should have came down with it. It's easy for me to say I've never jumped that high before. Percy had it poked, but a foul is called on Keon Jones on the reach. In. Now here's one thing that's indicative of, of Chris Chance, who's who's livid on the sidelines. It's never never seems to be about the referees. It's always about the defense. Mm -hmm. And, and he was, he's mad. I think it's Keon Jones that he wasn't happy with his help side defense there. But it's, it's, it's and now Muhammad Chom is going to get an earful. But it's constant pressure, uh, constant pressure to play defense in the half court from, from Chris Jans. And this is one of the areas the Aggies are seeking to improve on from the start of the season to now. They're allowing 68 points per game, which is a little high for a Chris Jans coach team. A watch Malawatch back to Azadine. Down the lane, pitches it out to Percy, who's only a freshman. Pull up jumper, way off. Rebound for Bobbitt, tied up with Malawatch. Bob, Bobbitt's been, CJ Bobbitt's been solid all year, hasn't he, Adam? He's, he's, a, he's a smart passer, he's a good shooter, he plays within himself. You watch him go get this one in traffic, in front with two Lobos around him, still comes up with the ball. And they call over the back on Malawatch. That is foul number six on UNM. And Malawatch now has three personals. Surprised he was still in. So he could take a seat for a while for UNF. Bursting ahead, Harris bounces to Bobbitt, and the Aggies turn it over again. McGee leads the break. Map is wide open, the best three-point shooter in the country. Maybe he was too open there, Coach. Foul called on the rebound on UNM. Well, it was certainly his, his, his best look of the night. Maybe it surprised him a little bit. Both the Aggies and Lobos have now committed four turnovers each. So the Aggies and Chris Giannis' team not handling the pressure as well as they did in the pit a little over two weeks ago. This UNM team is so long, so lanky. They're going to force a lot of turnovers. And I think that bounce pass by A.J. Harris moments ago against some teams that'll get through. Yes, but not, not against, against this not team. Not against this kind of pursuit, that's right. I mean, that's uh, one thing I'll say for both teams, despite the difference in style of play. They're both pretty fun to watch. All right, Coach Fia has eight shooting bonus free throws here. A lot of free throws early for the Aggies. They are six of eight. None oh, attempted so far for the Lobos. Dane Kuyper comes in for Tavian Percy for UNN. Knocks down another five of five on free throws for the Spanier. Lead grows to nine for the Aggies. They led 11 nothing at one point. Maneuvering in midair is Kareem Azadine, and he'll shoot two free throws. And Chris Giant, you can tell right now, is frustrated with his defense in particular. Yes, and, it, and I think the, the message is if you're going to let a guy catch the ball, that close to the basket, we're in trouble. And look at look at AJ Harris. Uh, AJ Harris comf comforting Jabari Rice, which is a, re a real leadership senior thing. Calm him down. Because look, how would you like that kind of pressure on you when, you, when you're a freshman? I mean, it's you know he's 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 an intense coach, and the Aggies respond to it. But there's really only one true freshman who's playing, and I think it was a nice move by AJ Harris to to, to pick him up and say, "Come on, Jabari, you can do this." I'm guessing that's what he said. Pressure again for UNM. Watch out for Kuiper, who has two personals already. Harris gets by Kuiper. Harris down the lane with the right hand. Tip for Aure Kolachea. Rim was rocking. Eddie Bond will shoot free throws again. Boy, is he tough. I, I wonder if he should just switch and become a heavyweight fighter. What do you think? Well, I would not want to be in the ring with him. No. As long as I'm not in no. there, I'm okay with it. Well, look at him go in, into a, you know, fearlessly into the crowd. Gets the, gets the ball among three Lobos. Gets bounced around. One of the things, though, Coach, he does really well is he still finds a way to control his emotions. He's never really out of oh, way. Oh, no, that's right. That's a good point, and I, ha I hadn't thought of that. First miss from the free throw line tonight for Aure Koetria, who's averaging 10 points and five rebounds a game. Ranked as the 10th best Juco recruit in the country last year. 
splits the pair. Lead is eight as we approach the under 12 media. Kuiper playing with two fouls. Allo watch on the bench with three personals. Fall away for Kuiper. Loose, saved by Bobbitt to Rice. Well, risky move to save it right under the basket, but it, but it paid off for Bobbitt. Bobbitt trying to avoid a trap. He's trapped on the baseline. Fire is out for Jones. Streaks down the lane. Back out for Bobbitt. Corner for Rice. High arcing three. Nearly an air ball. Aureko Echea fighting for the rebound. He's going to shoot one and one when we come back from break. That's Arn Pinchuk. That's number two on Vladimir Pinchuk. So the Lumbos have some foul issues here. Aureko Echea will shoot a one and one when we come back. Both the Aggies and Lobos have gone silent from the field. UNM has not connected from the field in almost three minutes. The Aggies, three minutes and 46 seconds with no made field goals, but the Aggies lead by eight after jumping out to an 11-0 lead early. Tonight's game is brought to you by Wells Fargo, proud supporter of New Mexico State basketball. Wells Fargo has a renewed focus on serving its customers and community. Established in 1852, re-established in 2018. Well, Coach, what have you seen so far? Well, it's it's the battle. It's the battle for well, it's a battle of wills between Chris Jans and Paul Weir as to who's going to control the tempo. Is it going to be a three-point contest, run and gun? Is it going to be a half-court defensive battle? And so far, the Aggies, uh, the Aggies are ahead. We saw A.J. Harris there in the huddle. He does not have a point yet. He scored 31 in the first meeting, but talk about his role here tonight because he's trying to break the press and then also lead the offense, which is tough to do both. I, th I think what happened at the pit was unusual. He, he's not usually thinking about scoring first. I think what happened up there was it was unusual. He did what had, to, what had to be done to win. But he's been a consummate leader for the Aggies. He's a terrific defender. He's lightning quick, southpaw. And uh, I, th I think now he's focused on getting the ball across half court and distributing. And it's working. All right, Coach Chia now 7 of 8 on free throws, 11 points, 5 rebounds. On pace, by far for a double double. He averaged a double double last year at the Juco level. He makes both free throws. UNF has two players in the game right now with two fouls. Pinch up, number 15, and Cherry. And Dane Kuyper also with two personals. Allen Watch on the bench with three. And the Aggies just brought Shua back in as well as Keon Jones. Quiet start for a lot of Lobos. Down low to Pinchuk with his off left hand. Corralled by Shua. This is Sean Buchanan. Guarded by Mathis across midcourt. With coaches, Paul Weir and also Chris Jans like to play a lot of different guys. In fact, for the Aggies, they have 13 players averaging double-figure minutes. Uh, battle for the ball with Dane Kuyper. Yeah, you can see Clayton right there holding his right ankle, so Jojo Zamora comes in for Henry. Adam State has missed 12 of their previous 13 shots from the field. They haven't made a field goal in almost six minutes. And they've had a lot of free throws. Paolo Coachin has to stop the Eli Chua with his left hand. He's so effective around the basket. The Aggies, to their credit, didn't, didn't miss him too much when he was gone. Chua missed the previous two games with a back injury. And he strips away Ezzedine and grabs it in the corner. Kuiper better be careful. He's playing with two personals, and it's off the foot of Ezzedine. I thought I thought Chua might call a quick time out there, but he just bounced it off a lobo leg. Lobo paw. What would you call it, a paw, a leg? Yeah, paw's fine. Look at him. He's slippery yep. quick in there, and he can use either, either hand. And he's got great hair. If only we could grow that hair. Oof, tell me about it. Keith McGee enters, replaces Anthony Mathis. McQuatch Malawatch is going to come in here shortly. He's at the scores table. 
and he has three fouls. If you're the Yankees, go right after number 10 in Cherry. He yeah. comes in for Kuiper, who has two. And Keith McGee played for uh, Steve Green at South Plains Junior College, one of the top junior college programs in the country, but also the guy who sort of delivered Randy Brown mm-hmm. to the Aggies many years ago. Hand off to Zamora, pull up, elbow jumper. Good shot there for JoJo. Nice and calm. UNM has missed six straight shots, 20 to six in a rivalry game. Vance Jackson, the UConn transfer, swishes in a deep three. Boy, can he shoot it for a 6'9 forward, 230 pounds as well. McCants to Buchanan, to Terrell Brown, launches a three, no good. Picked up by Malawatch, and the Yankees are now 0-5 from bonus distance. McGee triggers a three, splits off. Grabbed by Chua, pushed by Buchanan, the Yankees trying to push in transition. Brown's not shy, yes sir! Well, pretty, pretty, pretty great confidence by Terrell Brown, he missed, the last one was a, a good miss. And he had no hesitation about sinking that one. Shooter, shoot, coach. And Manigal to shooter as well. Paul Weir barking back at Manigal after he screened something toward the crowd. And it's just a wonderful program. Aggies will inbound from the corner out of the timeouts. And M State going with Zamora, Brown, Chop, McCant, and Harris. McGee, Mathis, Jackson, Manigault, and Malawatch is playing with three personals for UNF. Under eight left in half one. The lead is 11 for the Yankees here at home. Try to go to seven and one for the first time since 2013 2014. Four to shoot for Brown. Slipped, got it back. Floater, no good. Fight for the rebound underneath. And we get a jump ball. Possession this time goes to UNF. Well, it was a last ditch effort by Terrell Brown, but it wasn't such a bad shot considering that he lost control of the ball and the clock was winding down. Watch him here sort of recover. It's, it had a chance to go in there. And great board work by Johnny McCants and Muhammad Chum. Brown scored 20 in the first meeting in Albuquerque. He's had some really big games in the big games for the Aggies this year. Keith McGee running the point for UNM. Lobos at 4-1, only lost, came to the Aggies two weeks ago. Manigault lost it again. Another turnover on Corey Manigault. McCants, extra pass for Harris. Waits for Manigault, high arcing floater, got it. Three for Manigal, rush that one. Rebound for Chom. Manigal with only three points so far, a couple of turnovers. Harris again, bingo! Well, echo, echoes of the pit when A.J. Harris went wild and Paul Weir takes a timeout. Timeout for the former Aggie head coach with 6.35 left here at half one. That was just outstanding ball movement, Coach. And if you're a defense trying to rotate, it's tough to do, especially against a quick guard like Harris. Well, that's right. And, and the Aggies are so unselfish that the, the ball moves pretty quickly, uh, and that makes it even tougher for that makes it even it makes it even tougher than for the uh, for the defense to adjust and recover as the ball moves that quickly. And M State now shooting 33 percent from the field. A couple of threes as of late. They missed their first five shots from bonus distance, and now two threes for Brown and Harris. Yeah, and I'd heard a lot coming into this game, Adam, about uh, Manigault and Vance Jackson, but they've been pretty quiet tonight. Uh, and it's, it's, been, it's been all Aggies, and, and I think Vance Jackson and Manigault have combined for two points, or three points, I guess. Keep in mind, too, in the first meeting this year, the Aggies grew a lead of 19 and a half, two, and then UNM came storming back, so the Aggies have their largest lead right now of 16, but it's a rivalry game, and this one is far from done. No, that's right, and, 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 and also it seems to be the pattern of the Lobos this year is they get off to a rocky start and then catch fire, 
and and nobody looks as calm and collected as, as Paul Weir and he's losing by 16 and you'd think he was at a picnic and shot calls for it and grabs it Yvonne Aureko a chance back in defending him this one will go the other way moving screen called on UNM on one of those brush screens and that's a new point of emphasis the last couple of years with the officials. And we have a good crew tonight. Randy McCall, Jerry Pallard, and Eric Curry, a veteran crew for this rivalry game. That's right. And Randy McCall sort of a legend in the Aggie Lobo series in that up at the pit when Lou Henson was coaching, early in the game, Randy McCall fell and broke his arm. Very early in the game, he refed the rest of the way with a broken how about that? arm. Come on. It's, how, can you, how can the players quit when the referees are that tough? And I asked him about it before the game, and he sort of laughed yeah. it off, but it's a, it's a true story. Harris slings it out for Chom. Chom had a three, didn't take it, though. The Yankees will use some clock ahead by 16. Zamora's playing well, and he finishes again. Boy, nice and smooth going to the basket, high arching bank shot. JoJo scored 16 in the season opener, only 23 combined in the previous six games since. This is a foul on the ground on the Yankees. Going to be their fourth, the first on Jojo Zamora, who also converted on the other end. Well, Zamora and McGee taking turns going around each other. Here's our first look tonight at Drew Drennan, freshman guard from Georgia, who comes in for Paul Weir. Jackson on the inbound. Mismatch here with Jones defending it. Good defense for Keon Jones, and he calls Keon Jones for a foul. Pretty good D though for Keon there against a 6'9 forward. Yeah, he's Jones gonna, is only 6'1. Yeah, he's gonna need plenty of help when that happens. He, the, the, probably the double team should have came from from somebody. Somebody besides whoever's guarding Anthony Mathis. Vance Jackson, a good shooter, but he's only 61% from the free throw line. And he's way short on his first one. Had a sit out last year due to NCAA transfer rules. He averaged eight a game as a freshman two years ago at UConn. Out of Pasadena, California, at 27 in the first meeting. That's the second one badly as well. Nice right, trying to avoid a trap. Dribbles out of it for Harris. 7-0 Aggie run. Harris throws it right in the chest of Drennan. Aggies were rushed up there. At this, his floater's no good. And Pinchoff is called for over the up off the heel. Ivan Aureko Achia, 16 points, seven rebounds in half one. Most of the Aggie fans are standing right now. With their team ahead by 22. Mismatch here, Ivan. Fouled again. Well, really smart move. He faked into the double team, and the man guarding him didn't, would, didn't, wouldn't have known the double team was behind him and then turned the other way to draw the foul. The young man from Spain probably did not know much about the rivalry a couple of weeks ago. Now he does, and he'll shoot two free throws when we come back to Lou Henson Court in Las Cruces. back with you here in Las Cruces. How about that score? 34 to 12, the Yankees dominating their big rivals, UNM right now, as Chris Jans tries to go to 8-0 in rivalry games against UNM and UTEP since he came to Las Cruces. Tonight's game is brought to you by Wells Fargo, proud supporter of Aggie basketball. Wells Fargo has a renewed focus on serving its customers and community. Established in 1852, re-established in 2018. They're giving away some pistachios pizzas. Pretty darn good. Have you had them? I, I have, uh, uh, and, and I've been there for the pasta too. Pretty, pretty, pretty good stuff. Ivan Aore Koachea has outscored the Lobos by four in this game in the first 60 minutes plus. And he's been good from the free throw line before that one. He's now 10 of 12, 16 points, seven rebounds in just eight minutes. For the transfer from Indian Hills, Juco, which Coach Bradbird, back when you were coaching, you recruited the Juco's a lot. That's one of the better ones, isn't it's, it? It's always been one of the better ones. And, uh, and, they, were, and they were dynamite last year. 33 and one 
last year at Indian Hills was the mark for Al Ray Coachea. Kareem Azedin gets it off to Mathis. The leading scorer for the year for UNM has been held scoreless so far. Dane Kuyper, a senior, rises up for three. Way off. Usually a very good shooter, 47% from three. Buchanan to Jojo Zamora, who's played well in a starting role tonight. Did a balanced effort again outside of Aure Coachella. The bounce for Zamora, drills the three. Well, Sean Buchanan thread the, threaded the needle there. I didn't think that was going to go through. McGee gets a ball screen from Ezzedine. Shot was altered. She won the board. Buchanan will push, working on Arroyo. Back out for Rice. We thought about a three, didn't take it though. Buchanan gets by Kuiper. Hands it off to Chua, back to Rice, extra pass, Zamora again. How about another? Well, pretty pretty good decision by Jabari Rice who had the shot. He totally had that three-point shot, but Jojo Zamora had a better one and he's made a couple. And now Mathis will shoot free throws and try to get off the goose egg here. Mathis has not scored despite averaging 18 points per game. Mathis, a really good free throw shooter, as you would anticipate. He's now 13 of 14 on free throws this year. At 22 in the first meeting, he was a big reason why UNM was able to come back from down 19 to make it a game late. But the Aggies won by four. Yeah, I mean, he's shooting four pointers, you know, in terms of uh, their NBA threes that he's putting up, which uh, uh, you often don't want to encourage in, in, in every player. But boy, can he can Anthony Mathis shoot the ball? And also an interesting career, he averaged three points a game as a freshman, four as a sophomore. It's a good lesson for young guys. If you'll hang in there like Anthony Mathis did, you'll have a chance to be a great player as you get older. Aggies break the press with the ease. Buchanan has it in his hands. Good patience, Zamora again. Yes, sir! Unbelievable, Jojo Zamora with a breakout game at just the right time. Aggies are up 30 in the first half. Mathis launches, got it. First made field goal for Anthony Mathis. Well, Sean Buchanan, it's the first time I've ever seen him get bumped where it bothered him. He's such a durable kid. Clayton Henry is back in after turning his ankle earlier, so a good sign for the Aggies. Chua grabs it and finishes. I mean, the Aggies are going to have 50 points at halftime if this keeps up. Helped away by Buchanan. It will stay with UNM. Well, Sean Buchanan took a shot to the chin there and bounced, you know, Bounce back. He didn't hit the canvas, but he bounced back. Here's A.J. Harris back in the game. How would you like it if you're Anthony Mathis the entire game? You're hounded by either Buchanan or Harris. Uh, That's not easy for no a thank you. That would be a no thank you for me. Uh, you know, A.J. Harris has unbelievable quickness, and Sean Buchanan is unbelievably tough. Three for Azadine. Got it. Azadine now two of nine for bonus distance this year. He only averages four points per game. The big scores this year for UNM haven't done much. Hanigal, Jackson, and Mathis in particular. Also Kuiper. Harris keeps his footing. He gets out of a double team. And now a timeout is called by Christian. So the Aggies controlling this one so far. And... They've controlled this rivalry as of late, looking for their fifth straight win against UNM. They haven't done that since 1955-56. Last year was a fun one, too, last November, Coach, and uh, the Aggies were high-flying that night with Johnny McCants and City Endier and a few others, and that was the first game when Paul Weir returned to his old stopping ground. That's right, pretty pretty emotional. He seems, he seems less emotional tonight, but I've noticed when you look at the all-time scores with Aggies and Lobos, it's often one team goes on a streak and the other team goes on a streak. It's almost never alternated back and forth. And maybe, maybe this is the Aggies' time, I don't know. 
but it, it's been uh, it's been a remarkable display by Chris Jans's New Mexico State Aggies. They say they've opened up. It's a 26 point lead now, and he called time out there. I think he wants to go up 30 at halftime. And if, I'm sure that if Paul Weir feels if he could happen to cut it to 20, maybe he'd have a fighting chance in the second half. And how often did you hear it when you were an assistant coach from fans? Beat the Lobos, beat the Miners. Chris Jans hasn't lost yet. It, it is it is a very big deal to, to the fans. Oh, coach. That's my chance. Almost you caught see, one. You see the hand speed? I almost touched it there. Um, but, you know, it, it is a long season, and it was, I think one of the things I used to feel bad for Marvin Menzies, who would win the, you know, win the, win the league championship, go to the NCAA tournament, and people would grumble that he didn't beat the Aggies, uh, beat the Lobos and the Miners twice. And so there is there is a lot of weight for it, and, and, and also I think it, it helps with attendance. You know, if the, Aggies, if the Aggies win tonight, you can be sure there'll be a big crowd for Northern Colorado when they come back. You've got the Lobo fans shaking their heads and, and grimacing over there. Jojo Zamora looking for his 16th point. He gets it, so he ties his season high. He scored 16 in the opener, led the Aggies that night against the Bison of North Dakota State. And I mentioned this earlier, since then, he only scored 23 combined in the previous six games, and this has been a breakout game for the Utah transfer Zamora. Tavian Percy is a freshman to the UConn transfer Jackson. Steps back, gets rice in the air. Percy for three, pinballs out. Aureko Achea, eight rebounds to go along with 17 points. And the Lobos now shooting at about 20% for the night. Aureko Achea fouled on his way up, and I think UNM wanted a travel called on Rice on the penetration initially. But just once again, the big Spaniard is taking over territory around the basket. Now he's missing some free throws, 11 of 14. After that miss, he was 10 of 11 early. I think Chris Jans is doing a really, really good job, too, of keeping his guys fresh. You see him subbing constantly, and oh, there's, there's, the Aggies have been in a good rhythm. There's no red flag, and no one's in foul trouble. Nobody's hurt. I mean, they, they've, got, they've got everything in their favor here. Jackson will shoot it after thinking about it. There's another board for Yvonne. One rebound shy of a double-double. Well, that one, if he's going to keep taking extra steps, they're going to have to call it. Yeah, that was, uh, I think, a point of emphasis on that possession right there. After the previous possession, Paul Weir was frustrated that traveling wasn't called on Jabari Rice. So they were looking for it certainly right there. UNM shooting 50% from the field for the year. They're only shooting 21% here in the first 20 minutes. They need somebody to get going if they want to have a chance. And it probably should be this guy right here, Mathis. Malawatch is playing with three fouls. Met at the rim, but he finishes anyway. Well, he's quite the talent. You can see where he was on the Australian national team at one time. Harris zips into the front court. AJ can't finish. Put back in for Johnny McCants. And that is the way the first half went for the Lobos. Wow. 48-22. New Mexico State hammering UNM. Looking for their fifth in a row against the Lobos. Chris Jans trying to go to 8-0 against the rivals. It's all Aggies through 20 minutes. Well, if you're an Aggie fan, you hope the Aggies don't sleepwalk through half two. Can't imagine a Christian's coach team would let UNM back in it, although a couple weeks ago it was a 19-point game and UNM fought back. We'll see how half two goes here in Las Cruces. Jabari Rice to C.J. Bobbitt. Ivan Aureko Achea was the man in half one. He'll apply a ball screen to get Harris free. Slithers around defender. Zamora fires for three. He is red hot for bonus distance. Wow. 
Breakout game for JoJo. Short on the jumper for Tavian Percy. And the Aggies continue to rebound well. NM State now plus 20 in rebound margin. Zamora hasn't missed from three. He's a perfect four of four. This time he finds his way in the lane. Dumps it off to Yvonne. He reverses and scores. Not a good start to half two for UNM. Similar to the start in half one. Three is good for Ezzedine, who now has a team high 10. Once again, only averaging four a game. There haven't been many, many bright spots in this uh, in this debacle for the Lobos. But but again, there's still still plenty of time left. And a team that can get hot like the Lobos, it's probably way too early to count them out. Bobbitt skips it for Rice. Rice in the lane. Zamora again. Five of five from three. Jojo Zamora has 22. Wow. And, and he doesn't look like he's broken a sweat yet, Jojo Zamora. He's just, he's incredibly cool and calm. Pinchuk will shoot a pair, and he barely played coach in Albuquerque in the first meeting. Well, he's a little play, bit early, and then barely played after. <laughs> He's playing tonight, the, the Utah transfer, Jojo Zamora, California native. Look at that. Just just as calm as can be. And I think that's part of what makes the Aggies so difficult to, to, to deal with is the leading scorer is A.J. Harris at a, less than 13 points a game. And then it's just, you know, 12, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 6, 6. There's just, they're just a, a pretty balanced team, and, and anyone, I think, is capable of beating you. McGee goes out of bounds, back to the Aggies. Well, just a, a little bit of a sloppy pass by Jabari Rice. What are some of the keys, Coach, to handling that trapping full-court pressure? Well, part, part of it is you, you don't want to catch the ball. The first thing is you don't want to catch the ball in the corner. You want to catch the ball in a place where you'll have something to, something to do with it. So like AJ, were rare. He just drifted into the corner there. But, but but part of it is not not panicking, not panicking when the double team comes and trying to see over the double team. Rice takes it himself. And Rice scoops it through. What potential he has, though, hi huh? Adam. As he, as he as he gets stronger, he's going to be a terrific player for the Aggies. Now we talked about him a lot before the game, Coach. He needs to put some weight on, but he's so long, he's so lanky. He has a lot to grow into. And one for Keith McGee. I mean, you have to think at some point he's probably going to be six, 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 seven, right? That's right. And, and you know, for, for as thin as he is, Jabari, you don't see him get pushed around a lot. Uh, it, but it'll, it'll sharpen him up a little bit as he gets stronger, though. I think you're right. Now, Keith McGee hasn't had a great game, but he's had a great effort. Mm -hmm. he's, he's played hard all night. Eli Chua comes in for Ivan Aure Koachea. Yvonne was whistled for the personal, his second. Nobody's really in foul trouble for the Yankees, but a bunch of guys in foul trouble for the Lobos. McGee has two, Malawatch has two, Pinchuk has three, Kuiper has two, so they must have changed one of the fouls at the scores table during halftime because Malawatch had three at one point in half one. That must have changed. Rice again, dumps it off for Bobbitt. Extra pass, Zamora. Who gets Malawatch in the air? How about another? Well, look how the Aggies, are, Aggies shared the ball, shared the ball, shared the ball until Jojo Zamora, who's absolutely on fire, despite that blocking foul there. He's doing what A.J. Harris did in the first meeting in the pits. Can't miss from three. What is, whatever A.J. Harris ate up in Albuquerque, Jojo must have ate today because he's, he's doing his A.J. Harris imitation here. He only had 23 combined points in the previous six games. He has 25 in this game alone. McGee will trigger, gets it in for Mathis, who's been really quiet. Averages 18 a game. Mathis only has a handful. Malawash stampedes down the lane. Turnaround jumper. Friendly roll there for the Australian. Aquash Malawash. Rice bounces for Chua. 
Some contact there, no call. Handoff to McCants. Nice pass by Eli Chua. <laughs> UConn transfer Vance Jackson to Malawas. Guarded by Johnny McCants. Jackson, a threat from three, runs over Johnny McCants, who was waiting for him. Well, McCants seemed stationary to me, but he wasn't square to the dribbler. Let's take a take. Oh. There's Chua with, watch Chua come back in the play. Great hustle and a nice pass. That's a good feed there for a big man. That's right. Good awareness. Well, that's what's so impressive about Chris Jans's team is, you know, they're, 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 for example, their willingness to let Jojo Zamora be the star tonight. Just everyone seems perfectly willing to share the ball. Pinch up. Can't connect. Big 6'11", big man out of Germany. Terrell Brown just came in. No look pass to McCants. Well, McCants ought to make that one anyway, and I think he knows it. But uh, how did he get so open underneath there? And I think, too, Coach, some rust is still being knocked off for Johnny, who did not play in the first four games with a foot injury. This is only his fourth game back. And I think his conditioning still has a way to go. Probably his timing still has a way to go, but that's to be expected when you don't practice for months. Yeah. Although the times I've been to practice, you know, he's on the bike and he's doing doing, doing all kinds of... Uh, and remember how he, boy, he he really ran last year. I think he's naturally got probably pretty good endurance, but he's worked hard to come back from the, from the injury. He shot the ball better this year from the free throw line. Really struggled a season ago. Shot was improved during the offseason for Johnny McCants. Yeah, he's right at about 50%. Which is better than last year for him. And he splits the pair. Sean Buchanan just came in for the Yankees, replacing point guard A.J. Harris. He is at 36 for the Yankees. UNF can't buy a bucket. They're shooting under 30% from the field. And Trinan well, fouls Buchanan near midcourt. A little risky by Terrell Brown. I can only say what Lou Henson would say. is He, he didn't like the one-hand passes because you, you can't pull, pull the ball back unless you're Connie Hawkins or Dr. J with huge hands. and uh, the, the kind of the one-hand passes in the backcourt is a, a no-no. Here's a question for you. You think Lou Henson would allow Jamario Jones to throw his one-handed passes? Well, I think... <laughs> I That's think a in loaded that case, question. I think in that case, if it's, I think we'd let Jamario Jones do just about... He could sing the national anthem as far as I'm concerned. Buchanan's trapped. It's going to stay with the Yankees. I'll tell you what, though. Whatever Lou Henson told me to do, I would do. I know that for sure. Well, that's, that's right. He's won a few games, right? My goodness. Four minutes in. Half two. Lead is 36. Matching the largest here tonight for the Yankees. Brown trying to make it 39. Saved by Drennan. Well, that was the he right thing. That, yeah, that was the right move, actually, rather than throw it back under the basket. JoJo Zamora, the young man from Oakland, California, who played for Utah a couple of years ago, playing his final year collegiately with the Aggies. He has 25 points on 8 of 9 shooting. Aggies by 36. Van Amp Center is rocking tonight here in Las Cruces. Adam Young and former New Mexico State assistant Russ Bradford with you. JoJo Zamora is the story now. Early it was Yvonne Aore Coachea. How about JoJo? Did you expect this from him coming up? It's unbelievable. He had that great game at the start of the season and uh, just seemed so fluid and in the flow. And then he looked a little out of sync for a couple games. But, boy, he is on fire tonight. JoJo did start tonight, but... I don't think anybody saw this coming for this game, and JoJo's been the star early on. It was Ivan Aure Koachea, who already has a double-double, and the Yankees have thrown their lead to 36 as we resume action here at the Pan American Center. And besides that, Adam, in, in fairness, uh, Zamora's been terrific, but the, the Aggies were trouncing the Lobos well before Zamora caught fire. It's just sort of a just added insult to injury, I guess. Terrell Brown with it for the Aggies. Now Sean Buchanan. 
Keon Jones on the catch, as the Dean's all over him. Jones trying to go behind his back, pokes it away from Mathis, throws Whoa. it off of Mathis, and the guy goes flying into the tree leaders. It's going to be Aggie Bull, and it looks like everybody's okay. Those are some tough cheerleaders. That was a full body slam by Keon Jones. And the cheerleaders, look at look at how tough the Aggie cheerleaders are. Watch this. This is a, ooh, that's all his weight right on right on a couple of those cheerleaders' head. They're all smiles. They, they didn't even flinch. Look at that attitude of the Aggie cheerleaders. Leading the break is Buchanan. It pounces for Chua. Take away home. It is 38 points for the Yankees. Catch and shoot for Ezzedine. Missed that one shallow. And McCann snares it. Buchanan gets by Mathis, lost the handle, and it's going back to the Yankees. Sometimes against this pressure, you get sped up a little bit, don't you? Yes, yes, and that's what I, that's what was a, a rare a rare ball handling mistake from Sean Buchanan, who often plays mistake free. Remember, remember against Washington State, he drilled a three-pointer, sort of a nail in the coffin against the Pac-10 team. So we see Eli Chua take a well-deserved rest. But there's Chua who can use either hand well. Eli's a point shy of a double-double. Nine and ten for him in his first game back from back injury. Scoring drought is over two minutes now for Kuiper and UNN. Kuiper on the spin, back out to Malawatch. Malawatch just backing down Sean Buchanan. He has about seven or eight inches on Sean, and he used it. And then Mohamed Trump can't catch it right through his fingertips. Well, that was a good pass. It hit him right in the hands. And, and Terrell Brown did the right thing. He ran the baseline to elude the defense. But I think Mohamed Trump was a little surprised to find himself with the ball. Lance Jackson, back door, looking for Ezzedine, poked and stolen. Chom has not played much tonight, played very well in the first meeting, though, in Albuquerque, a season-high nine points. Catch and shoot for Keon Jones, missed it wide right. McGee, lost the handle twice, Kuiper, Tipped out by Ezzedine, caught by Jones. No numbers, two on three. Jones will wisely back it out and poke it out for Cha. Cha back door for Brown. Brown underneath. Wheels it out to Buchanan. Rebound for Kuiper. Jackson in transition, splashes in the three. Vance Jackson with his second made three, but he only has six, and he averages 13 a game. But well, Aggie's got a break there. Terrell Brown just went after the loose one and came up with it. Lob from the kids, and he jams it in. It wasn't exactly perfect timing, but it was a perfect, perfectly placed pass by Sean Buchanan. He waited a second. It was an unusual play. Another one for Vance Jackson. His third made three. And this is what happened to the Yankees in Albuquerque. Jackson started to get hot. The Yankees turned it over a few times, and all of a sudden UNM was back in it. Now this differential is much larger than the 19-point lead in half two in Albuquerque. This one is 32 right now. Sure looks like his foot is okay. <laughs> he can't miss the first four games with a foot injury that he suffered during the offseason. Chop picks it up. Extra pass to Harris. Sling it back out. Brown and open three. Terrell Brown coming on like gangbusters. He, he said he's a very good defender, Terrell Brown. Beating ahead is Harris, lobs it for Aore Kovic, and he tips it in for two. Oh, 
And now McQuatch Maluach is bumped by Chum on his way to the cylinder. Now the Aggies coach playing above the rim. Well, we're, the Aggies are approaching a 40-point lead here. I, I just, I don't, I thought I'd seen it all in college basketball, Adam, but I've, I've, I've never seen one that I thought would be a tremendous game dis, dissolve the way. And, and it's still 12 minutes, and the Aggies are, or the Lobos are a hot shooting three point team. Now, we're going to talk about this as we go along in the final 12 13, but the Aggies have a great opportunity this weekend as well. We're going to play Kansas on Saturday, number two team in the country. And we'll talk about that as we go down here in the final 12-13. Harris all the way to the rim. Big Messiah for HN. McGee bumped by Jones on the baseline. Playing Chris, Chris Jans is furious that the Aggies could score a basket and give up a layup on the next play. This is one you, they've got plenty of time to get back here, and, and I think Chris Jans is, is correct about this. Is you can't, you, you can't, Aggies can't give up layups after made baskets. And he won't stop coaching. No, in that's the final right. 12 minutes, if it's a 37 <laughs> point lead, he may come over and give us an earful, Adam. If we're not on top of our game, I'm going to stay focused here. You, you can relax if you want to. But I'm going to stay focused with Chris Jans coaching the Aggies. Here is on the catch from Rice. Baseline. Oh, Ray Kloacheon. Nice pass. Mathis forces a three. Air ball back to the Aggies. We'll let the crowd take you to break. And then stayed ahead by 38. NM State 12 of 16 for the field. In this half, they led big at halftime to lead by 38 right now. Un unbelievable. I just I just never never thought I'd see this tonight. Uh, just relentless, relentless Aggie offensive onslaught. Lobos have contribu continued to struggle from the field, and the big Spaniard has been a huge part of the Aggies' dominance tonight. So UNM is only shooting 30% from the field. How much of that has been the Aggie defense? Well, I think I think all of it, I would say. But there, Anthony Mason missed one open three-pointer, and, and the rest of them has just been hounded. Zamora finds a hole, lays it in. 27 for the Utah transfer out of Oakland. Jump ball, possession will stay with the Lobos. <laughs> Keith McGee will trigger in for UNN. Bounces in for Pinshaw, pinned off the backboard by Aure Koichea. And there must have been some body because I know he got all ball. It looked like a looked like a pretty good block, but that's that, that's that's Randy McCall, the veteran official. So it must be true. All right, coach, what do you see here? Well, th for one thing, uh, Jabari Rice needs to shade towards the basket so that he's guarding the inbounds man and he's guarding him straight on. Now he should, needs to be protecting the basket. Aggies, Aggies have out-rebounded the Lobos 37 to 13. And that, that's, quite a, that's, that's, that's quite a dominance on the boards. Three fouls now on Yvonne, so he'll take a seat with 11-20 left. Tipped out to Pinchuk, looking for a big possession, and he breaks the hook. This is a team, folks, that shoots 50% for the field for the year. High arcing floater for A.J. Harris. 
UNM held a 29% shooting tonight. Well below their season percentage of 50. Mathis, bump, no call, follow a jumper. Off the mark, rebound McCants. And the Aggies have control of the glass. Plus 20 rebound margin. Zamora to Bobbitts. Pinchuk rips it in. Do you feel like UNM's been out of sync all night too, Coach, offensively? Well, it has to do, it has to do with the Aggie defense, I think. They have, they have looked at a lot of sync. And I thought, I, th I was surprised, I thought they looked a little gassed early, you know, tired early. I, I, it seemed to me that Van, both Vance Jackson and, and, and uh, Corey Manigault seemed to, be, seemed to be gasping for breath pretty early in the game when it was still in single figures. And maybe it's just the, the intensity and speed of the Aggies that, that made it seem like that. Well, you always know Chris Gian's coach teams are going to play hard, but whenever you have this many options, you can really, really play hard because you're going to come in for two or three minutes and then head to the bench. Well, that's right, and, and I, th I think we saw, we saw sort of Chris Gian's 101 when uh, Aggies were up nearly 40 and gave up a layup, and he was livid on the sidelines. But there's, there's no, either we're going to do things the right way or we're not is, I think, basic Chris Jans. It's only December 4th and for Chris Jans he's thinking bigger picture down the road. Same with Paul Weir too. This is a UNM program that was picked third in the Mountain West this year. Low pass caught by Buchanan and a reach and foul is called on Malawatch. No. Well I don't I don't want to point that, that was not Sean Buchanan's fault. I mean he, he nearly had that but CJ Bobbitt picked up his dribble in the backcourt there with no one to pass to and and, and sean wasn't even open uh, so they near, called traveling there on sean? yeah but near, nearly pulled nearly pulled it off just through his hustle but couldn't couldn't get his feet set turnover number at 11 now for the aggies drew drinning on the pick and roll as the dean pitch out for kuiper in the corner kuiper was tied up and a foul is called on the floor on the Aggie. This one goes on C.J. Bobbitt. First on C.J. And that's already the ninth on the Aggies. Only two on UNM. Eli Chua is going to come in for Bobbitt. Pretty much this entire year. At least when healthy, the Aggies have gone 12 or 13 deep. And this is their first game, by the way, at full strength. They've at least had one player injured in every single game this year, not available. Early it was McCants, then A.J. Harris missed one game, then Shua missed two. So this is the first game where the Aggies have had everybody available. Under 10 left, the Aggie lead has been as many as 41. Zamora to Buchanan. Lies back to Buchanan who runs the point here in this combination for the Aggies. Trying to lob it for Chua, stolen. And Buchanan hits Rinnan. And now UNM's gonna shoot two the rest of the way. There have been, if you want to nitpick, there have been some uncharacteristic turnovers on the Aggies during the course of tonight's game. Yes, I think if we are, if we're getting nitpicky, they have 11 or 12 turnovers. But in, in a game where they're they're likely to score 100 points, that's not that's not not no disgrace. And honestly, if you're playing UNM and you're around 14, 15, 16 when the game's over, that's still pretty good. UNM with the way they play, they're used to turning people over right around 20, 22 times a game. Terrell Brown comes in for the Aggies, and Drew Drinnen will shoot one more free throw. Fans here in the crowd want free Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Drinnen misses this free throw, they get it. Okay, look, everybody wants free Chick-fil-A. One of the promotions here through NM State Sports Properties is if the opposition misses two straight free throws in half two, free Chick-fil-A for everybody with their ticket stuff. 
Top of the key, Chua. Zamora to Brown. The Aggies will run some clock. With nine and a quarter left. Zamora down the lane. Good pass for Eli Chua. Well, Zamora having a career game tonight. Beautiful pass there. It'll be interesting to see if JoJo can carry this over to the rest of the season. Drinnen fires a three. Good looking young freshman from Georgia, Drew Drinnen. Zamora around Jackson. Bounces again oh. to Shua. Can't convert, picked up by Drinnen. Almost what? another assist there for Yeah, Jojo. another beautiful pass. Eli Chua just couldn't get it to go down. McCants grabs the Kuiper miss in transition. Zamora to Brown in transition. McCants taps it out for Buchanan. And the Aggies with a fresh 30. Lopez feed to Chua, and he was held by Vance Jackson down low. Well, I think the Aggies need to keep it up here for a couple reasons. Adam, in some ways, it's not a not a great thing to, to, to go, go up to Kansas after sort of this this sort of free-flowing uh, romp. Uh, but also, I just don't think they want to irritate Chris Chans. <laughs> That's the biggest reason. I'm staying focused here. You you can relax if you want to, but I'm going to dig in these last these last eight minutes. Here is triggering it. Gets it in for Brown. Right back to AJ. Looks like the Aggies are trying to isolate Harris against Kuiper. They get to that isolation set. Blocked by Drinnen, who came over on help D. Jackson a step back. Transition three way short. Those are shots that the Paul Weir lives with. Those are the type of shots you and to get. Down the lane, a finger roll for Chua. Eli Chua has a double double with 13 and 10. Well, and we will go to break. Great passing by the big 54 man. left in half two. Lead is up to 37 for Chris Chance's punch. And M State is up big against UNM, looking for their fifth straight win against the Lobos for the first time since 1955-56. We mentioned the storyline earlier. Brandon Mason, former Aggie player, currently on the staff of Paul Weir, played for Coach Bradford in Ireland. We have some photos, Coach. Well, there it is, the Trilly Tigers. And, of course, uh, that wound up being my first book, uh, Patty on the Hardwood, which I only right. mentioned not to sell books, but that it was with the University of New Mexico Press, my, my first publisher. And it, it all culminated uh, with an exciting finish where Brandon Mason at the top right there was MVP of the, MVP of the league. And you might notice, uh, you, you might fans might notice that my hairstyle is a little bit different, uh, only only because I had less options. But uh, anyway, I, I would give you some of mine, but I don't have much left. I'm kind of hanging on here, yeah, coach. Go, go Trilly Tigers! That's all I have to say. Patty on the I'll hardwood from the University of New Mexico Press. It's about 10 years old, but it's gotten had great life. And there's Brandon Mason, one of the stars of the book and the stars of the uh, Trilly Tigers. What do you miss most about coaching? What, 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 well, uh, honestly, uh, the, the great health care. Okay. It's a funny thing to say, but just any little ache and pain, there's some team doctor who can't wait to help the Aggies and just because of the support we had in town. But also, I like the going out to eat, and I miss the fellowship of the guys and the dramatic ups and downs. I don't miss the downs, actually, but, but the, 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 the highs were pretty high, I have to admit. Do you miss the recruiting part of it and trying to find that dive well, into the rough, like a Sean Harrington? The, the, that was... The, 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 I think what wore me out was that eventually it was, just, it was just a grind. It was a little bit like shaving, like you had to you had to do it every day. Or, or well, I shouldn't say that with Chris Jans looking so good with his beard, but it, it was just a relentless grind. And I eventually I have great admiration for for Lou Henson and Don Haskins and guys who stay in it for life. But I just I just ran out of gas. Keon Jones off the catch now. Mohamed Shah, Shah Buchanan, Rice, Keon Jones, and Robert Brown. So some big minutes for Brown off the bench. Three for Rice. There's Brown with the offensive rebound. Puts it up, trying to jam it home. 
Look at the young man from Dallas going up with some force. Well, he still looks like a big kid to me in many ways. He looks like he's all legs, like he might he might still grow. And he, just, he, he looks like he's 16 years old, and I hope the Aggies will hang in there with him. He changed his body during the offseason. If you saw him last year around campus during his redshirt year, he weighed right around 260-ish, and now he's down to 230. So he's kind of transformed his body. Moves really well, good hands. Well, he's got a Could nice have free a bright throw. future. Yeah, nice free throw, nice free throw too. It, you know, so, sometimes with uh, kids get impatient, but I think he's really got a chance of it. Just, you know, might might take a couple years, but and as you know, big guys it often takes a little longer to develop. But look at Robert Brown battle in there for position. Both coaches have used their entire bench. NM State has not made a field goal in over three minutes. Things have kind of slowed down here. NM State led 50 to 22 at halftime. Their lead got to as high as 41 about eight minutes ago, and the lead has dwindled to 34. I guarantee if you asked everybody in the building before the game started, what kind of a differential do you think it's going to be, whether you asked a Lobo fan or an Aggie fan, and I'm sure... 90% of the people would have said it's going to be a single-digit game. Yeah. And it has not been for a long, long time. No, that's right. In fact, the Aggies jumped out to an 11-0 lead and really never looked back. Final three minutes. UNM will still press. On the catch at midcourt is Jones, tipped from behind by Drinnen. And that's foul number seven on New Mexico. So one in the bonus for Keon Jones, who has yet to score tonight. We saw Chris Giannis go with a much different starting lineup again. He went with Zamora, Harris, Babid, Aure, Coachea, and Rice. Jabari made his first collegiate start tonight. Boy, he's Chris Giannis has used a bunch of guys. <laughs> He, 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 you know, he wants to fit, he wants to, he wants everything to be done the right way, regardless of whether the Aggies are up 30 or down 30. And he's got plenty of things he wants to still work out this season. Nazidin working on Sham, and he slapped across his wrist by Mohammed. We've seen a lot of free throws in this game already. 31 attempted for the Lobos and 26 attempts for the Aggies. I get the feeling that Christian still doesn't believe the team's defense is where it needs to be at the end of the year. No, that's that's right. And, and you know, any, any little any little breakdown sets him off. And it's he's a he's a perfectionist. Imagine that. Most coaches are right. Well, but uh, I think especially I think with with Chris Jans, it's just the sheer force of his will. Oftentimes, it's a nice way of saying he's stubborn. Jones slings it ahead for Chum. And then tipped away in the wing by Keith McGee. I can't imagine many of the rivalry games have been like this where you're kind of just playing out the final, gosh, seven or eight no, minutes. It's usually the opposite, where it goes down to the wire. Mohamed Chum, Chubikina. But if you're an Aggie right now, Andrew Lobo, you're fighting for minutes in future games in these final 215. Brown. Kept his footing and hooks it in off the window. Well, you can see where the, where the Aggies would have taken a chance on a big guy who could move like that. Traveling for McGee. And if you're Robert Brown right now, you're fighting for minutes. You're trying to get in this rotation of 12 or 13 guys. Well, that's right. And it, 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 stranger things have happened where, you know, a guy gets hurt, a guy gets sick, and the next thing you know, the Aggies will need Robert Brown. So he needs to, he needs to take it seriously. Buchanan in the front court, spins around, guarded by McGee in the lane to Chom in the corner, rises up a contested three and he knocks it through. Well, I think the fans won 100, Adam. Chom for 100. 
Jones saves it. Buchanan in the corner for Rice. He's looking for 100. And he got it. And Chris Chan showing some uh, positive emotion on the sideline. Arroyo sticks it in. Well, the Lobos had a chance to cut it to 30 for a minute or two there, but now it's, it's 38 to win. Deion Jones working on Azadine. To Chom in the corner. Side step triple. Short. Rebound for Malawash. Final 40 seconds. What a night for the Aggies. This will be the largest margin of victory for NM State in a win against UNM. Drennan connects from three. Previous largest margin, 103-72, a 31-point Aggie win on December 5th of 06. Wow. Chris Jans will improve to 8-0 in rivalry games. And he's going to become the first Aggie coach to go to 4-0 against UNM since 1922-23. Buchanan, the Aggies have to get a shot off, or at least try to. And that'll do it. 35-point victory, a thumping 